So the first thing you want to do is you come over here to your grinder that doesn't work anymore, and then you realize your problem. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome to my shop. So you've got turning tools, you have a, a foot-powered lathe, and you're hell happy, but then you have to try and figure out, wait, how do I sharpen this without a grinder? Because normally the way to do it is you put it on a slow speed grinder and you just grind a bevel in and you go back to working. And that's fantastic, but there's two problems. Number one, a slow speed, slow speed grinder uh, needs electricity. And number two, when you're working with your foot, you want this to be as sharp as humanly possible because you're the one putting the effort into it. And if you're working with a power lathe, taking it right off the grinder really isn't that much of a problem. It still works fairly well. But for a foot power lathe, you want to get rid of that burr and get a really nice clean edge on there. It makes everything work so much easier. Now, the easiest and quickest answer to that is just to use your bench chisels. Um, as some people have been telling me they use their mortising chisels and other things of that nature, and you can use it at a 45 degree angle to make it a skew chisel, and you can do most of your work with a bench chisel. And those are just as simple as sharpening on a stone. But let's get into a few other ideas to make it a little bit easier so you can still use your massively two foot long bowl gouge on a foot lathe. So the big question you have to ask yourself is, do you need that whole long honking item? I, can you remake this into something that is better for the foot-powered lathe? If you were to cut it off here and just turn this into a small handle, then it really isn't that hard to do on these stones. And even with this skew that's about 18 inches long, I could still do this on here and actually still sharpen on the plate. I'm biting up close to it, and I'm holding all the weight up here, and just as I'm doing a chisel, I could still sharpen this on here. But, you know, that's still kind of hard because there's, uh, there's a certain amount of bounce back here and this is wanting to wobble up and down as you go on these plates. You can do that. It does work fairly well. But what I found I actually like is to use these diamond paddles. And so I have this, uh, this set and there's a bunch of different ones out here. I'll leave a link to this set down below. And these work fairly well at just quickly doing an edge. So what I want to do is put the handle back into my waist, kind of rest it on here so that the tool itself isn't moving, and I can use this plate to then sharpen the edge. So then I'll just grab the paddle itself, and I'll put it on, and I'll let it rest on that angle. And that will let me know that that is the angle I need on this chisel. And then I'm just going to keep my hand at that angle and run along it. And what I'll notice is if I'm tipped down too far, I'll see all the scratches back here on the back of the bevel. Whereas if I'm tipped too far forward, I'll see all the scratches on the front of the bevel. And eventually your hand is going to find that bevel. And so I'm just going to be going over this thing from one side all the way around to the other. Then I'll go on to the next paddle. And I'll do the exact same thing. I'm looking for a different scratch pattern, a different shine all the way across. Then I'll move on to the next paddle. And just like that, that's all I do for a good touch up on this bit. And so I'm going to be stopping, you know, every 10 minutes or so, or maybe even sooner. Whenever I feel this kind of getting dull or the surface getting more fuzzy, I'm gonna stop, hit it with those three, and go right back to town. So it doesn't take a whole lot of time to keep a nice clean edge on here. And the same goes for the skew. Um, I could bring this back over to my plates, but I'd rather just having these paddles here. And there's a, there's a larger edge on the skew, so that is a fairly easy one to grind over. Now because of this one, I'm gonna do both bevels. I'll do all of my grit, my coarse on one side, then I'll flip it over and do all my coarse from the other side. And I'll feel a burr, and I can feel that burr comes back and forth and back and forth. So then I'll flip it back over and I'll do my medium. I feel that burr came back up onto this side, so I'll do my medium on this side. And then I'll grab my Fine, and I'll do that as well. And then when I'm really feeling it, I'll just grab a piece of leather that I have with some stropping compound on there, and I'll buff on that. Making sure not to pull back and cut my finger. I'm always just pushing away from me on these. And there we go, I have a really nice sharp edge on there. If I wanted to, the buffing compound could be down here and I can do it just like a normal chisel and grind that out. Now for something like the bowl gouge or the roughing gouge where I want to get inside here, 
Usually I'm just going to be sharpening the outside and I'll do that a couple times until I feel that there is a fairly heavy burr in here. Uh, most of the time that will get cleaned off on the, the gouge the first time I go across. But every now and then I'll feel that I either sharpen too much and there's a burr hanging over um, or it's been a little while and I want to clean up the inside and then I'll just use a slipstone. And the slipstones do exactly what they say. They just slip in through here and clean up that burr on the inside. And then just like before, if I wanted to buff it out, I can use the strop and buff out the tip. I can even bend over this loose piece and let it fit inside and strop out the inside of the roughing gouge. For a traditional scraper, basically what you want to do is have a slight bit of burr still hanging up around the top here. So I always want to push that burr forward. So just like I did with the roughing gouge, I'm going to come in the exact same thing and sharpen up this way. And I'll go through all three of them, but I'm not going to come and clean up the flat here and take that burr off. I want to leave that burr on the front here, so I'm not going to come and clean off the top here. That little bit of burr then becomes basically just like a plane, and you're running in there and it's actually curling the wood up on top of that burr. So uh, these are actually a little bit easier to, uh, to sharpen. One other option you could do is turn your lathe into the actual grinding tool. So just like you'd use a slow speed grinder to grind on there, you could imagine if for a moment this is a grinding wheel. I don't want to do it because I have no need to with the diamond plates. But in this case what you could do is take your grinding wheel, put a bolt through there, sandwich it, put a small dent in here and a small dent in here, and then chalk that up in between your centers. Run your rope around this and then this wheel would be able to turn and grind. You would want to re reverse the rope so that when you push down on the lathe it rotates away from you and then when you pull up it rotates back towards you and so what you'd end up doing is you put the tool on there, step on the, the pedal and let it grind forward, take the tool off, let it come back. Put the tool on there, let it grind forward, take the tool off, let it come back. And so you could do the exact same thing on the lathe, and you'll see a lot of people with a flywheel lathe, they'll actually have a grinding wheel attachment on the outside. Uh, Shan Rogers actually has a really cool um, design and video for that if you want to see that as well. But uh, you could do a grinding wheel if you want. But for my money, I actually really like using the diamond paddles. They're quick, they're easy, and they do a very good work. As long as you don't let it go too far, they really only take a few seconds to hone up the edge again and go back to the wood. A lot of people out there really want to overthink the sharpening method, and especially in the world we've gotten into with lathe tools and jigs, is there's a jig to do everything, and in sharpening there's a thousand jigs in order to make it perfect, when really all you're doing is you're grinding down steel to a point. And if you just keep that in mind, how are you going to clean off one side or clean off the other side and bring it back to that point? It's a fairly simple process, uh, as long as you're not really overcomplicating it. Now, is this the perfect process for everyone? No, everyone's gonna to wanna to do something a little bit different and uh, find something that works for you. And I've really found that I like using these paddles. They're, they're quick, they're easy, and they're rather inexpensive um, to buy a whole set of them. And, and yeah, I'm enjoying them. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please let me know down below and I'd love to hear your idea. What's your favorite idea for sharpening a big lathe tool without a uh, slow speed grinder? I'd love to hear that. Also, I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys really are the reason why I can keep putting out videos like this. If you'd like to help out with that or find out more about Patreon, you can do so right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and see some behind-the-scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today, and until next time, have a wonderful day.